my thesis that Hamilton is the villain of his own story. Friends, if you are... Th- I'm going to talk directly to YouTube for a moment. YouTube, this is your first time watching this channel. You may not know this. In the description section of this episode, in the notes, there's going to be a thing that says skip introduction. It's going to include a time code to jump past our introductions. If you hate us, I don't know why you're watching us, but if you hate hearing us talk about ourselves, I want to jump directly to the action. Hit that button. AP is the manual version of the skip intro button on Amazon Prime or Netflix. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so we're here. This is the second episode of 2020 plus plus a cyberpunk 2020 second edition game. Just want to ask folks at home, if you're going to refer to this game, please refer to it as 2020 plus plus, uh, or cyberpunk say the full thing, because when you start using abbreviations like CP, that's how you get a dude showing up in your pizza parlor, Ooh. shooting up a broom closet, looking for basements. So please do not use the abbreviation CP. It makes YouTube unhappy and it makes crazy people unhappy. So that's that's what I have to say about that. Moving on. Also, also use the full name for crazy people. Don't shorten that one either. <laughs> or if you're going to use the, the terminology CP, put CP 2020 at the end of it. Like just add the number without a space. You're good at that point. That's the year of the convention. I'll buy that. Phonetically. (laughs) (laughs) Look, there's a giant game coming out, Arthur. There is no way that people aren't shorthanding that word. You'll be fine. I am concerned about me, not the game. The game has its own legal department and probably security guards. Yeah, and and YouTube (laughs) doesn't understand. I have a bunker and a couple of guns. That's it. (laughs) Um, what's in the bunker, Arthur? Me. Oh. And the supplies you would need to survive for oh, about three more months. So. What well, shit? You left your guns outside of the. Bu- Arthur, come on now. The guns. <laughs> I'm not telling you where my guns are now. Look, we have this beautiful overlay art that has been added. I'm gesturing in the correct direction for once. Uh, you can see all of our wonderful characters here, as done by Bearded Jalopno. You want to commission him? He's available. We got these these great things here. And Radosaurus has finished the battle map. Let's see if I can make this work correctly. It has, in fact, worked nice. in the manner it was intended to. I've been told no, that Rad, that cool. as you might know, Rad is going to be redoing the Cyberpunk 2020, the other overlay. It will look more like this one. Probably. He's already changed this one twice today. So, I like the uh, I like the cityscape. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good stuff. It looks cool. It could be like if you have like multiple monitors, it could be like the thirteen. What is what is the resolution? It's like thirteen thousand by twelve hundred tall, which is like three monitors like ultra wide. So it could wow. be a a big old panorama of a dystopian city and desert. You, li- guess, you, you live in a different you know, monitor realm than me. <laughs> I've only got two 1080p 24 inches. Oof. Well, I, listen, the main monitor is 4K, which is great. Absolutely wonderful. I'm using a 10 year old flat screen TV for my monitor. Well, nice. yeah, I got that over here too. That's what I put mm-hmm. Zoom up on. And then I never look at it because I look at you guys directly on OBS. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. All right, look enough about my setup we're gonna do brief introductions see if anybody's got any special projects or any cool stuff going on and we're gonna hop back into the episode we're gonna go clockwise from 12 o'clock the main man some call him the salamander others call him the palamander what yeah you you're the palamander because you're such a pal like listen like a prince of pal listen the number of people who as you might know, I have the summer survey going on, right? Mm. And people put in their favorite cast members. You you have shown up a surprising number of times, Sputnik. Your name is misspelled every single time, but you you sure. are there. Spudnik, Sputnik are uh, are some that I've seen. Spudnik. <laughs> I think they, they hear it phonetically. Um, the thing that I heard from last week is that people like it when you do that uh lean you do a shoulder lean while looking directly at the camera and explain to dave why his plan is absolutely terrible 
in character. <laughs> I, that's I call that the Henley lean. Yeah, Pe <laughs> listen, people listen. People people love that lean. They lo like you. You're aiming to steal hearts with that lean. Is what I'm saying. Uh, see, All right? Spooty and I are, are back, like the, the donkey <laughs> yeah. Halloween costume. He's the head. I'm the butt. That's yeah. how it works. Okay. Yeah. It's it's like I'm it's like I have two people. It's like I'm leaning over to look at my own ass. I don't know what to say to that. What do you got I going like on, it. Sputnik? Uh, pretty much this. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, this is this is a thing you could live towards. I'm not sure that I, anybody I, but me should be living towards this. But no, uh, no, uh, doing this um, board gaming in real life. Uh, I've been uh, playing the remaster of Trails of Cold Steel Three. Oh yeah, Switch. I saw you tweet the heck out of that. Yeah, it's really it's really good. Um, I, I played the first two years ago. Um, never played the third one. It's really good. Uh, it's a very good show. Uh, show. Uh, game. They're video games, not a show. Um, there is a lot of talking. It is a JRPG. Um, How many dot dot dots have there been? Oh, I stopped <laughs> counting after 70. That's my favorite. Um, but uh, no, the, uh, the game is really good. The battle system is um, expanded upon from what I remember uh, of the original two games or there were actually like three games i think before the third one there was like a weird offshoot one but um anyway um really cool combat system it is legit turn based which is awesome but it's also like spatially aware like instead of attacking you can reposition your people uh which is cool um not just spell casting but also what they call craft skills so you have like your spell casting spill uh spell casting abilities which if you do that it will actually drop you in turn order um then you have like what they call crafting abilities which is another sort of uh bar under your character portrait um points to use up that fire immediately then you have your basic attacks it's just super interesting. There's um, uh, battle orders that you can give that increase your damage or defense. Um, there is uh, links you can set up between characters. There's just so much to play with in the battle system. It's it's super fun. So I definitely recommend it. Um, it is expensive, man. I mean, they release it at full price, um, which sucks. But, uh, you know, it's also probably like a 100-hour game, so you know, time to, to money. I think it's a fairly good value, but um, yeah, that and playing some of the new track mania. Mm. Which track is also mania. fun. Now mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is not something I expected to hear. Yeah. I, I, I've been getting back into racing I games, man. Game. Track mania is not a racing. Uh, yeah. I mean, it kind I of is. It's like a beat your own score. Type to, to fucking fresh jams. Mm-hmm. That, that that game is more like a hey bro, I'm just gonna chill and just dick yeah. around on a on a race. It's like it's like Gary's mod surf maps of racing games. Yeah. <laughs> but and the multiplayer is pretty cool, man. You know, like it's you know, everybody's a ghost car and you're just trying to either keep up with them or whatever. It has um ranking like in the US it has ranking by state, region, and North America. So like I can see like, oh, you're in the top 75 on this track in South Carolina. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'll pat myself on the back for that one. But um, you know, there's only 75 people in South Carolina playing, so. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> I, there, there's like 200 something, I think, so that I saw, but um, it's it's a fun game. And it's, it's cool to like just zone out for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, just can I beat my score? Can I beat my score? It's fun. Track anyway. Mania had the same feel as like um kind of wipeout games to me. Like the super fast. Yeah. But like you just kind of sit in there and you're like, it's all about like tiny movements. Yes. Yeah, it's very arcadey. It's not a sim at all. It's there's literally three buttons. It's accelerate, brake, and emergency brake. That's it. Basically like wipeout, except for yeah. wipeout has the like airship sci-fi aesthetics. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's what I went up to. And Euro beat. <laughs> mm. All right, uh, Jillian. I want to say there was a comment on YouTube where someone's wife walked behind them and went, "Oh, is that fashionista?" And I was like. <laughs> I didn't know she was so popular that people's wives would get involved in it. So, you know, I'm everywhere. Apparently. Yeah. What's what? Listen, got any announcements you got? You want to hit for us? Who are I mean, you? Yeah, you know, what I, do you I do? Just sent every, I had a really lovely interview today with business insider. They're going to be doing a feature on me. I have no idea when that's going to come out. Um, but no, that went really well. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, no, still just do my refashionista thing while I'm, fun employed from digital marketing, just making dresses, doing my thing. My loss of employment is everyone else's content game. Wow, that, listen, <laughs> that, it took a moment, but that statement sunk deep, deep down inside my heart. It's, <laughs> the fun employment is is real. Um, yeah. Okay, normally we'd, we'd hop to Dave, because that's how clocks work, uh, but oh no, there he is. There I was, was going to say. <clears throat> Just in time. The critical four, I, I 430 here. right there was gone. <laughs> I was here. I was just making sure that my in, like my internet was having a bit of a struggle snuggle with itself. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I was just solving that. Hello. I'm here. I'm back. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I just I, I've been doing my normal thing, but um you know what i have been doing a lot of lately is Pilates. visiting that damn meat dimension over and over again i don't know what that means oh uh, p4 p4 my damn he knows persona games i tell you what so i, I Wait, you've been playing persona, persona 4 oh yeah yeah golden came onto steam recently. Oh. It's, it's real nice um so uh basically so i played the original one uh, a while back um and i beat it obviously it's it's a fucking phenomenal game i never thought i would return to it then they released the golden version which they added a bunch of new shit in there and i thought to myself i'm gonna actually 100 percent the game so i'm gonna go through i'm going to uh sit down and 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 i'm gonna look at when I can do things on what days I'm going to plan out, like meticulously plan out what I'm going to be doing. And part of that involves a little bit of safe scumming because some of the um, statistical upgrades you can get by doing particular things in the game are randomized. So if I don't hit the right three stats when I visit the meat dimension, I got to restart the fucking game or else I'm not going to hit everything in one playthrough. But um, but no, I don't think it's possible to hit a 100% in one playthrough. You have to play it multiple times. In in Golden, yep. like in the in the extended versions, you can oh, hit can 100%. You? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can 100% all the social links. You can look at like crazy shit. Holy shit. Yep. Um and but you have to be fucking so meticulous with everything. It is insane. Oh yeah, I'm sure you can't make one error. Yeah. Like for example, like you beat like um, Yukiko's uh, Persona dungeon, and then you're like, okay, I can only spend one afternoon beating a dungeon. Like I have to sit down and beat the entire dungeon in one one go. Just shit, get it done. Um, but on top Stock of that, you up also on those SP items, man. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Um, and the other thing is too, like you have to do this thing where like, okay, before I even socialize with anyone, I have to have the right type of persona in my library or else I don't, it doesn't go as far as it normally would if I didn't have it. So sometimes you're like, okay, there's a new, there's a new persona called Aeon in persona golden. And for example, the first time that I, I played, I actually had to restart my game because I was like, okay, apparently I can get an Aeon persona, but what level can I get? So I, I played and I was thinking that I'd find it in the first dungeon no you have to be level 18 so to put that in perspective you have to go into the dungeon grind up to you know level 20 the the boss you can beat at like level 12 right so mm -hmm. you have to stay 
extra long in this dungeon and you can't spend extra time in the dungeon and at that point you haven't unlocked the fox which you could just pay money to to get like a revive or whatever um so it's just like this insane fucking grind oh god it's insane but at the same time it's 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 kind of cool because it's a really different way of doing the game um and then there's also things like okay so i have to get i have to get all of these quests every single one of these quests i have to get them at the right day and then i have to go into the dungeon at a particular time and then i have to grind out all the dungeon until i get these items from these particular monsters as well it's insane it's really fucking crazy um and if you've played persona before and you don't really want to you know get golden it is so good on the pc the only thing the only problem with it is it has a uh, de novo which sometimes means like if you leave it idling like i've had some times where i'd be playing and i'd be in a dungeon i've been in the dungeon for two hours and my wife wants me to do something so i'll go do it and come back de novo will actually shut down like the game because uh, like, oh the internet for whatever reason like does a thing or whatever and then it's like yeah you know is is off. four your favorite of the personas um i really liked three but three yeah. is kind of like it doesn't have the quality of life stuff that um four has. well yeah because you can only control one party character and the other ones are done well, for you in the Fe in the fez version you can like, true persona three fez you can I, I found that p3 fez is coming to steam later next year is, i will oh. buy the fuck out of that dude that game is so good like if it's... persona 4 is persona 4 is really good and it's really well written but it's also very fucking childish yes persona 3 is like super fucking dark and edgy in it's because it's even darker than five which is great oh, yeah. well persona mm -hmm. 1 2 and 3 were written by the same dude four and five were written by a different dude uh and then six is going to be an even different different or dude <laughs> persona 3 I mean, has has the best cut scene i've ever seen in a video game and it happens in like the first hour the first time that the main character understands how to summon this persona and it's the uh -huh. only time he says anything when he like whispers persona and then shoots himself in the head it's fucking amazing it's it's, it's crazy it's yeah those games uh just amazing but one and two in terms of persona are just fucking awful <laughs> Three, I, i've never played one or two it's never they're played. awful they're, they're bad as fuck they're really bad but um no persona 4 golden is really good like it's in terms of the writing i i equate it to like it's it's kind of like a young adult book you know mm -hmm. that, that's kind of what the game is like um yeah the the teenage characters are, are written really good for teenagers I thought you know it was mean, cheesy, like, like, oh, we're getting sucked into the TV. Like, I just didn't like that aspect of it. Yeah, but they're they're also doing stuff like you know they'll they'll have they'll be stupid in teenage ways. You know, like they'll yeah. they'll think about things from a perspective that's very limited and very non-adult. And then when an adult talks to them, they're just like, "What the fuck are you guys doing? Stop being idiots!" And they're just like, "But the police can't do anything." And they're just like, "Look, the police." Is are doing tons of shit in this game and you guys are yeah. just like oh it's so dumb but it's i don't know yeah i would recommend if you've played persona 4 before try to do this 100 percent thing because it really makes the game different like it, and it, it really makes you focus in the, in a different way uh, like yeah. to, to put in perspective like i've got like a like a list of days like okay i'm in june right now mm -hmm. so i have to go through each day one at a time and it's like okay i need to do this this and this and this day and this order and this day and then i have to do this particular thing at this time and it's it's really interesting it's like yeah it's a, yeah i don't know it's a good game i recommend everyone play it arthur that that means you you should play it we're talking persona 4 golden yeah persona 4 golden uh, 200 hour long all i know about persona 4 is that there's dancing mm -mm. There's not. That's nope. Persona 4 dancing all night. That's different. Yeah, that, that's a rhythm. That game. sounds like the words Persona 4 and dancing all together. <laughs> oh, they, they, here's, here's what they do. They uh, go listen, Persona I'll think 3, about it, Dave. Then but they go dancing game, then they go Persona 4. I am dead set game. against Persona forever and ever because of Persona 3's protagonist putting a gun to the head and pulling a trigger. 
that for like a any game in which firearms are depicted in the incorrect usage i immediately go screeching noises but it's like they're like phantom firearms they're not i understand firearms. but it could encourage people to do some real it's dumb very, shit when it's marketed yeah. to teenagers i mean i i definitely get the but for me in that game uh, they almost accomplished it with the with the mask in Persona Five. Um, for me, it solidified the link between the characters and the personas, like literally drawing the personas from inside their bodies to the outside. One hundred percent. They they right? like and in, in other games are just like in like in Persona Four. It's like oh look, you have a card, and then you. Bitch it, slap it over Persona <laughs> 4 feels like Pokemon to me, whereas Persona 3 and Persona 5, in my opinion, do a very good job of saying these Personas are within their bodies and they have to experience some sort of physical pain in order to bring them out. And that to me is very compelling. But okay. I can see what you're saying about the fire. Like, and that's been that's obviously the huge controversy on that game as well. Also, Persona yeah. is like Jungian philosophy embodied in anime. Mm -hmm. like your yeah. darkest self kind of kind of shit. Mm -hmm. It's very I, interesting I, games. Yeah. Very Persona compelling. Handled games. it very like the story in Persona 3 is fucking awesome. Like it is it really is. good. It's, um, it's it's the best, I think, of three, four, and five story wise. Though I, I will say the final boss in three was an absolute cunt. Oh yeah, he can just one shot you. Yep, you're done. No matter how much you prepared, just oh RNG one shot you. Yeah. Holy fuck! But all right, uh, listen, yeah, we got to wrap up this persona talk. Any last second zingers? Uh, I mean, uh, the only the only thing I say that's disappointing about Persona Three is that the dog didn't shoot himself in the face. <laughs> wow, I don't know what to do with that. Drummer <laughs> boy, take me away from whatever that comment was. <laughs> Rudy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> My like, wife I'm, is like, what the fuck have you been playing, Brian? Yeah, this is that's <laughs> that was a weird comment. Drummer, unlike, what do you got? Unlike the 100 percenting part of the game, that's why I play a lot of games on like hardest mode first. Yeah. Because it forces you to learn all the mechanics that they put in the game or you die. Uh -huh. So like Witcher 3, I played on hardest mode because you need to know how the oils work. You gotta know how the potions work. You gotta know how like the oh, what are they the metagenics the the weird mm -hmm. mutagens yeah. mutagens like you have to stack them properly in your window to like be adjacent to other things to get bonuses or else you're just struggle bearing the entire time yep so like but there's also like games that do that badly that just increase the like Deus Ex does this badly where it just increases the amount of bullets that it takes to kill someone and that's it well Talk. you mean deus ex human revolution right uh human revolution and the other one uh the other newest i don't one. remember yeah maybe mankind divided that's the, the yeah the remake yeah okay yeah the prequel remake yeah that was i don't also, remember also i remember it being games, awesome yeah also with those games like i play them stealth yes and then suddenly, i mean that's the way to do it right no kill stealth well, well, it's it's not original. It wasn't no kill, but mean. like yeah, <laughs> you go through in the newer ones anyway. You try to stealth through, and then suddenly you have a like an un yeah. You have to kill. Boss fight. You have yeah. to kill. You have to like fight things, and you have to kill things. Which, if you're hundred percenting into stealth, you have no gun skills at all. I'm gonna so say that something that most Deus Ex people will will curse me for, but I think Deus Ex Two, like invisible war deus ex was the best in terms of stealth in terms of um like just overall presenting the player with like options and how to play it was it was really yeah. good but most people who play deus ex are just like they hate invisible war with a passion i but like that two. was around yeah two was really good it was like around the time where it wasn't quite like it was like Xbox One. They made the game for Xbox One, but they also made it for PC. And it was around the time that that the Thief games came out, and it was like, right, you know what I mean? It was that weird, awkward stage where they didn't quite know how to make it look good. <laughs> yeah. But, that being said, I liked Thief One through Three better than Deus Ex Two. 
because I played through. I'm I'm still planning on getting back to um, finishing off my first person narrative sim playthrough of like I'm at um, Dishonored Two, I think. I've still got Dishonored Two, Death of the Outsider, and Prey to go through on that, but because a lot of the same devs worked on that and like were inspired by previous things, so I was like following that line and playing through them all. Um, but yeah, I'm drummer boy. I make music. I still make music on occasion. It's been difficult lately just because the world's on fire. Actually. Um, Ashley Birch put it the best I've ever heard it like two weeks ago on Twitter. She said it in a tweet. It's like, it takes three times the effort to do half as much work. And that is so very, very true. I'm feeling that. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. That's... Are, you, are you like burnt out? Like what's the deal there? Yeah. Well, like it's that mixed with also being deep, deep into star Wars tunes and they're very difficult to write at the best of times and right now is not the best of times so because you wanted to sound so much you would like say it's it the worst of times <laughs> it's the dark times <laughs> that e3 thing can you tell us anything about the game it happens during the dark times okay <laughs> thank you on to the next thing oh i also chopped half my beard off thanks ah. getting very warm out here so i just also, I was looking like Davy Jones. Oh, damn. You're wearing the black shirt, so I didn't notice. Do you yeah. feel like you're at half strength? <laughs> no, it's actually, I'm less itchy. <laughs> wow, that's a Samson and Delilah reference if I ever heard one. Yeah. Well, I, I also like buzz my head at the same time. I actually recently re upped all of my like grooming beard care shit uh, recently, and I decided to swap from oil to balm. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I, I like mostly because like whenever I wear shirts and shit, because you know you put the shirt on. <laughs> when you wear you, like, shirts? No, w like when you wear like oil. Rarely, he's Australian. You know. yeah. He's Australian. <laughs> mostly he's shirtless. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, but wow. you get you, you get like the oils on on the shirts around the collars and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, and I just got fucking tired of dealing with that shit. So I'm hoping the bomb stuff works out better. The, the bomb stuff is good. On that note, yeah. I have half the amount of beard now. So like I overused the beard oil because I'm used to like coating <laughs> the bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I like put it through and then I had to take another quick shower because I'm like, this is disgusting. It feels like I deep fried my face. That's what I'm saying. Like it gets to like to that oily state and you just like, I've yeah. ruined my beard for the day yeah. because of this now. Now it's like uh -huh. a, now like I know how much it fits on my palm and that's like the proper amount to like do the whole thing. I once mistaked Brian's beard oil for like my like fancy face oil because they're in a very similar bottle <laughs> oh, no. and dropper situation. Oh, and no. yeah, I had to do the same why thing. Why do I smell like sandalwood? What is yeah. this? Like, why am I greasy? <laughs> yeah. We had a conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, Got anything else, Trimmer? No, no. I've been deep into Destiny 2 again. They got the new season happening, which is actually Ooh, it's actually yeah. interesting this season. Last season was a little bit too grindy. This season is building on the mechanics they introduced last season, which is like that was the most interesting part of last season, but it got kind of stale quick. This one is a lot more interesting because it's including every planet. Okay. Like so every you, so every location. I know exactly why I stopped playing Destiny, and I think maybe you can attest to this as well, but like, I felt like the middle child in a divorce settlement between Activision, Activision and Bungie. And Bungie, because yeah. at that time, there was like, hey, here's the new expansion, and it was just like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, that's yeah. enough for me. You know, like, I, I, I put all this effort into, like, being hyped for the game and just being like, oh, I'll do my daily, oh, I'll do my weeklies, and it takes me, like, the the weekly content takes me, like, two and a half hours to do. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll wait for next week to do anything again, you know? Yeah. If and you're, like, if you're still feeling that way, it's 10 bucks. It. It's 10 bucks to buy into the new season, and I think it's worth it. Like, you don't, you actually don't even need to buy the season pass. You need to, if you want to play it and just try it, I think it's like you can do everything up until like the the second 
actual part of the season missions. Cause you can do the first half, just like be introduced to stuff. And then if you buy the season pass, you get more shit and then you can actually participate in the rest of the season. Mm. But it's, I'm liking it. It's really good. It's got like a, they introduced a new, um, a new elemental power. So, you know, how they had like arc void and flame. Now they have umbral, which is like a, the like a darkness thing. They could have picked literally anything else that would have made more sense in umbral. <laughs> well, it's, it's like harnessing the darkness. And right now is like Ooh. the dark, like, <laughs> yeah, everything's doing that. Even like, wow. And uh, final fantasy 14 already did like shadow bringers and like, Going to Shadowlands, going you know, in the darkness, going to harness that, use it against whatever. But Shit, um Okay. They did that. They also last season they introduced like the a rock, paper, scissors mechanic for champion enemies. So now you have um mods oh, for your okay. guns. Mods for your guns that are like over overcharge, um barrier breaking, and uh another one that makes the enemies really hard to hit. So like if you're using a gun that doesn't have the hard hitting mod on a hard hitting champion, then you do half the damage. Cool. But if you have that, That's... you do twice the damage. And then the barrier you don't ones. Don't want to carry two guns, yeah. <laughs> no, you can carry three. You have your main, your secondary, and your oh. heavy. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and then also like your armor can get these mods too. So like, if you're using pulse rifles, and my arms have the all pulse pulse rifles do this type of damage like this kind of over overcharge or whatever, then you don't even have to have it on the gun. You just have to be using a pulse rifle or an auto rifle or whatever it says. Right. I it's see. interesting. Like they've got a lot of small, like the small additions that they made from season to season are now stocking up into something pretty cool. And then next season, they're vaulting content because like there's a lot of stuff. So now they're going to like take away locations and bring back older ones, like from Destiny 1 area or Destiny 1 era. Oh, that's an it's interesting a, concept. Yeah. Because then they don't have to keep everything fresh and it doesn't have to like, nothing, ha like you don't, like you're not going to have like a super populated like world map or whatever. Yeah, you or just, like, or complete dead zones. Like you go to EDZ and there's no one there. So if you're yeah. trying to do public events on EDZ, you're the, you better be able to solo them because no one else will join you. Oh, I'm into that. So now it's like, idea. now it's like they're vaulting content like that and they're bringing back Europa and another destiny one location next season and they do seasons every 90 days so you kind of get your money's worth like i've i've only i've already spent 10 bucks and i feel like i've got my money's worth already and i've still I'll tell got you what when i climb out of that main dimension i'll join you my friend sure wow we keep coming back to this listen drummer boy i me, uh, meat dimension is such a weird we were talking about moi okay it's just you're trying to eat a giant burger man no no that's it's the meat bowl? dimension nope it's i don't want to know anything else drummer you got you, you got anything else drummer uh <laughs> and handle the idea of the meat dimension i don't know if the knot thing has come out yet the knot thing the nerd or die thing that i worked on i don't know if that's out yet they got the sale going on right now yeah oh um it's kind of a little bit hush hush, but you're like, you know, they're going to do it eventually. They're mm -hmm. going to like start doing bundles and kind of build your own bundles. Yeah. So if you, if you want to get all my sound packs for cheaper, they come to all together in a bundle soon enough. Don't know when, but it's a smart thing to do. I think I have them all already. So I'll live. It's true. Wow, the bundle. A terrible link. <laughs> yeah, it is a terrible link. And it, I see the words, the entire internet. What yeah. Is I that? see the word meat dimension in there. <laughs> so I'm good. Shit. All right. Glimo, what do you got? Well, I feel left out because I did not play any game, computer games yeah, you know, this week. So, <laughs> Glimo, what are you cut, doing? That'll cut yeah. another 25 minutes off the introduction. Ooh, so. Thank you. Sure. I, could, I could live without those 25 minutes. I mean, you, you know, play I'll, a mobile I'll, game? I'll, Come on. I, uh, I ran my Call of Cthulhu game on Sunday, uh, took a few days off, um, which was nice and actually got to be like outside scary and yeah that's that's about it ready to play some cyberpunk all right am i the only one that that's seeing dave's camera occasionally do real weird shit 
I just, yeah, like, bounces that up in okay. my eye. Cool, thank you. All right. I thought maybe it was just me or maybe I was haunted. Yeah, it's bouncing up <laughs> too. I mean, that's, listen, it's not the bouncing up and down thing that worries me. It's occasionally, like, it goes, Flipping? yeah, that, oh, yeah, right there. That. that has been happening the whole time, and I didn't know whether it was just me or my monitor or... Is that a setting you have, Dave? Is that something you've done? No, that's my that's my cyberpunk mode. So... All right, it's freaking me out, man. <laughs> uh, all I have to say is that I'm a fake Grand Order player, and fake Grand Order just had some big stuff. Oh, you poor, going to... you poor man. Go oh, fuck you off. Fake Grand Order is amazing. <laughs> How's and... Bone Zone Two happening? Is it is it another like one Wait, day? Wait, hang on. No, no, the lot. No, the no. Bone Zone, and I can't have the meat dimension. No, no. <laughs> First off, the Bone Zone is where you farm skeletons to get their evil bones. Uh, there's no like the Bone Zone is over and will be the next Bone Zone time. I think is gonna be uh, December. Oh man, that's, have to wait that's so a long hell of a dry spell. And... <laughs> The the meat dimension happens every time it rains, all right, motherfucker. It's real simple. <laughs> all right. Anyway, so the new servant release, Scotty, uh, who I understand has a persona in the Persona games. Uh, she's actually based off of the fact that in Persona, uh, maybe it's Shimigami Tensai that you can level up your Skahach into Scotty. In Fake Grand Order, Skahach and Scotty are related spirits. So. Uh, one is a Celtic goddess and the other is a Norse goddess, but they kind of share a soul in some way. Anyway, Scotty is a evil fascist witch, but also she has good gameplay mechanics. So now she's on my team. Man, you brought up you brought up Dave's glitchy camera. No, I can't. Yeah, you can't it. unsee it now. <laughs> listen, you want to talk about things that you can't unsee? Listen, you get ready on the battle overlay. The names are not level. They're not straight, apparently, is what Radosaurus told me. So oh, when we no. flip over there, if you look at it, you won't be able to unsee it now that I mentioned it. I don't thanks, have to thanks that for bringing that up. My other screen is that. full of the book and Roll20. And just to be clear, that's not Radosaurus's fault. That's my fault. I managed mm -hmm. to make it that way. So uh, previously on this show, I previously. Uh, Maxine is someone uh, who is on the hook for a post-mission uh, illegal gun buy for 10 die long auto pistols for 200 euro bucks yes. in, in exchange for body parts, which you're going to give to this person uh, at midnight after the mission. Uh, the mission, of course, is this janitor that you found whose name is Jeffrey Johnson. He wants is to it? go. Yes. Oh, yeah, Jimmy. He wants to go join Arasaka because you fooled him into believing that that you are with Arasaka. Dante Fierro has offered you a completion bonus if you finish the mission within 24 hours, which means finish it the night of. Get it. And you all have one gold access card that will allow you access to any of the uh, facilities rooms based on the resource manager's ability. However, you're told that it will shut down after hours, like, which is your plan, is to go, <laughs> go in after hours with the card. Uh, you have forgeried five copies of this card, which all of you have now. Uh, you are approaching a Zeta Tech laboratory, Warehouse 22, which is shutting down for the night in order to do some sort of system update. Uh, so it should be minimal security, minimum risk. You're... Can we get that blueprint up again? Yes, and the audience hasn't seen the blueprint, so uh, this is what the facility is going to end up looking like. Gracias. All right, let's let's see those names, crooked and everything. Let's go, Arthur. Come on. I mean, you see the names now. They're there. They're right there for you. Oh no, I'm, I'm talking about the overlay in the stream. Yeah, they're there. I'm telling you, they're there. Okay, oh. I have to wait. Gaze upon them. To catch up. Okay. I have to wait. What was the what was the company's name again? Like Zeta something. Zeta Tech. Their wetware software management. So the first thing we see is a, uh, a news report logo that we all recognize because it's Channel 54 News. Everybody in the cyberpunk universe watches Channel 54 News. After the, you know, like da 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 da, da and the intro, you know, three bars, um, it vanishes and we're left with a familiar newscaster he's got uh, brown hair blue eyes some say 
that the eyes are so perfectly and clearly blue that they must they must be cybernetic replacements but he always insists he's all natural uh boyish smile hair a little bit wild but not too wild don't want to upset the uh, the senior citizens uh this is james jives who turns toward the screen and says i'm james jives and this is channel 54 news uh, at the bottom the chiron we reads uh wu-tang financial stock price goes up after merger in new york city uh and he says our top story tonight a punk night sighting a uh, punk not sighting deep within old red line but first a look at dante fiero and his growing empire ever since moving into the central american federation's territory and then slowly trails off as we catch the five of you looking at a news report uh on a holographic billboard just to be clear there's no billboard there it's you know being projected into midair uh, as the five of you meet up so is it uh right before your job are you spending all day just preparing and showing up right outside warehouse 22 for the job at eight o'clock sharp so i have a question sure. from uh for for all of us from last time i know we had talked about whether we were going to do the pincer maneuver of having uh having drummer boy cut in through that hollow wall yeah so just to be clear i mean it's still a wall so there's wiring that runs through it and uh, plumbing and all that stuff but it is not like reinforced wall you know it, it's like um i thought you said it was a uh, like one side glass yeah yeah exactly is that the, is that the wall down in the bottom right hand corner yes it is okay yeah so i was under the impression that this this card was going to work but it, you made it sound like that it's i, I indicated to you several times when you got the card that it will only work for the day that he declared like he had to go into work today and he told you he'll have to say i lost my card i need a new one and by the end of the day the card would no longer be useful to him yeah we still have a a, a series of hours where the card will work Yes, unless, unless but, time dude, we did, but, dude. You, but you are going in after the facility shuts down. So theoretically, if what he told you is true, the card may or may not work at that point. So we need to get in like right before the facility shuts down. Correct. If, if okay. you want to use the card and you believe that the cards will get you in the facility. Or just like a couple of us could use the cards and get the other couple in. Sure. Maybe. Didn't we? Yeah, it's a stuff in the trash chute. Didn't Pascal yeah. do, do a forgery thing last time where we yes. have like one that works and one that looks you, like. You have his... his actual card, and then you have five copies that look like they will work, but absolutely will not work. And they yeah. have your faces on them. But we can wear them as badges so Correct. that if anyone questions us, it yeah. looks like we might maybe belong there. Yes. What do the governments call them? The pin chip or whatever that's embedded in your contractor ID? Oh, uh, uh, um. Yeah, but you know what I'm talking about. Spinner. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I have you have fake pin, you have chips that will not work, but yeah, yeah, yeah. they, the ID has a nice shiny gold thing on it, so it looks like it's correct. But you, you try like, to swipe uh, that in anything, it's not going to do shit. It's like Jim Carrey and Dumb and Dumber, we can just rush and be like, it's okay. I'm a limo driver. Just... <laughs> Go right through. Uh, so if one well, person know, gets in, they could get everybody around. else in. Yeah, he, that is reasonable to believe, but you have no okay. basis for that reality. Got There's it. no factual evidence for that. Okay. So you all tell me what you're doing before you... Let's say this is meeting up sometime that same morning, right? Because you just came out of the Dread Gazebo coffee shop where you came <laughs> up with this plan. <laughs> what you you have a whole day to come up with some planning and some assets what what is the plan mm. in the background you can see james jives uh waving his hands and talking about how uh vice president of the united states of american provisional government will wheaton will be giving a uh a statement uh, about his first two months in office and the new updated plan for internet reform throughout the country so, I mean, I'll say Newton is prepared. I mean, he has his ammo, his weapons, his fake badge. He's ready to go. 
Um, I would think that uh, Newton being a solo would be um, perched at a location, just observing what's going on around the building uh, to make sure that he doesn't see anything um, out of the ordinary or anything that contradicts what our uh, previous sources have told us about this facility. Okay, so you're going to ride your motorcycle up to New Red Line, and you are yeah. going to go Batman the facility where you just watch yeah. it in the middle of the night. Okay? For sure. All right. Uh, anyone going with you? Or if not, what is everyone else doing? I mean, I'll, I'll hang out. I'll hang out with... Uh... With uh, uh, Newton, Pascal, Newton Maxwell. Newton, Newton. So All right, you I, riding I, on the back Newton of his bike again? Is... Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, it's. I mean, I live in. Okay, so explain to me the divide between the apartment buildings here. Are we all in under Red Line? Is that, no, is that it sounds where... like uh, at the very least Maxine has a uh, moderate zone, have... so she lives yeah, in the I suburbs. As well. as all right, well, so you live so... outside of Red Line City proper in these mm -hmm. little corporate prefab suburbs. Okay, yeah. Um, so all your neighbors around you, most of them work for whatever corporation sponsors that neighborhood. They wake up every morning, they ride a bike, or they grab a Segway, or they catch an Uber to a uh, train station, and then they ride mm -hmm. a, a light rail, like a mag rail, to New Red Line and do their corporate job, and then they come back, they go shopping in their neighborhood, and they live their whole lives like that. Yeah, okay. Um, so... Mash Nathers just moved in there. Like he's he's like I he's new to Redline, uh, specifically for this job. Um, so he doesn't have any furniture whatsoever in his apartment. Like he's literally like moved in, bags still packed. Funny you knew someone who had a stuff. special deal on furniture recently. <laughs> so he, he's probably he's probably doing the thing like busy. like I don't know is um is uh, Newton the type of person who would you're gonna ask him to help you move a couch by, <laughs> come by and 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 pick me up for this like cool male bonding experience that we're gonna do well i mean yeah i mean i i would take you i'm not gonna move a couch for you but you can no, no, I don't, I don't ride with me to case out the joint all right then yeah, great no, i want to exactly do a scene at your house so yeah um i I like the idea that I'm across the road, look like looking through a window at like couches or like a bed or something like that on the other side. And it's just like, man, this, this bonus, Newton, you have no idea. Four corner bed, real wood posts, posts that can support the weight of a human being, maybe several human beings. So Newton, while Mash is going on window licking this, I sleep on a futon. Uh, so your you're senses. Out. You need to have at least two and a half inches, maybe even three, of like lift off the ground to get optimal, like lumbar support. You need a, a roof that keeps rain off your head, a oh, door no, that keeps that. the bad guys out. Yeah, I got that too. Food to and live. Even, right. I half and half, you know, I mix, but I tell you what, we're going to be on easy street. Once, once Dante sees how much of a good job we did setting this place up. I mean, can you like, do you even see that? I mean, look at that. I bet, I bet you can't even count how many threads that has. I, I, I grab him by the back of his collar and put him on the back of my bike. So for you, Newton, you've yeah, lived you know. in Redline City your entire life, mostly yeah. in the combat zone. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Cyberpunk 2020 universe, there are a number of different gangs, uh, and these gangs have, have subtypes to them. Uh, for instance, there are things called uh, prankster gangs, and uh, the worst of their lot are the bozos. They dress up like evil clowns, and they walk around in those squeaky shoes and the big red noses and the full makeup and they beat the hell out of people because mm. it's funny for them uh there's also a type of gang called the poser gang these are people that try to emulate somebody famous 
uh fictional characters they all try to get body sculpting or cybernetics to look more like their uh select protagonist you notice that four members of a gang called the karens is approaching you specifically uh i mean you're driving a motorcycle and wearing you know what you wear you look completely out of place in this, this neighborhood and you sure. know that the karens are exactly what you would think they are Every single one of them has that bleach blonde bottle hair. <laughs> They've got the, I would like to speak to your manager comb over. No one knows who the original Karen is, but all of them have come through their bulletin board surfing to the same kind of generalized look. Oh, look, here comes the homeowners association. Look, yeah. We, so, yeah, I mean, you've seen these people around mash and you're accepted yeah. among them because you, you have a real job with the corporation and you, you dress. Okay. Newton, if these people catch you, they might call the police on you. They could set dogs on you. It's not great. And you could see them approaching you at medium speed, like not too fast, but power walk. They got their, they got their, they got their like, the, the stick. Yeah. Oh, walk and they're walking in the like... street too. The sidewalk means nothing <laughs> to them. They're wearing oh, live, laugh, love t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we all that. know what, what the Karen oh, gang yes. looks like. <laughs> oh yes. I have a very vivid picture in my mind. Um, I'll, I'll look at MASH. I'll be like, unless you want to deal with you know who get on my goddamn bike and it's time Look, to I get out of here you didn't bring a helmet but you had one before where did it go you hear the lead carrying going excuse me excuse me can oh, you wait Jesus. there for a minute <laughs> mash it's starting we we have to go we have to go right now i really really don't want to kill they're getting closer today. you can hear a second one going he's not wearing a helmet that's not oh, allowed Jesus around here Christ. A third one is pulling out her cell phone. I physically grab Mash and put him on my bike and rev the fucking engine and go. <laughs> the fourth one is going, you hear that? That that reached the maximum decibel level. All right. Make sure you know, get his license plate number. Uh, I, I generate so much smoke from peeling out that they cannot <laughs> read my license plate. <laughs> Uh, this is smoke tires. This is a roll, actually. Uh, is it? Oh, I think it's called shit. Hide of Aid. Oh, I don't have that. Hide um, of Aid or motorcycle? Uh, no, it's gonna be Hide of Aid to escape the Karens. I don't have that. Uh, Please that tell me. Not like, it's not like Terminator running off. <laughs> Please tell me you took the 10k loan and you are in debt to the Karens. No, oh. no, not quite. Um, oh, let's see you what come stat to you're my rolling. neighborhood asking me for cybernetics <laughs> um oh hide of eight is an in skill i don't think you're that bad off right uh yeah so okay. what just roll in yeah you need to hit a 10. okay no mod right no mod 12. okay yeah hey. you use your street smarts you use a little bit of know-how and you use a lot of motorcycle rubber to put smoke up there and uh you peel out no, none the wiser to the karens i i can i can evade some karens if That's i true. need to it seems to be something that i wouldn't say you have a specialty at it um before we cut to the two of you Batmaning the facility, what are the other three of you doing? Fixer, fixer, doctor. Think of fixer, Taylor, fixer, soldier, doctor. spy. Fixer, fixer, doctor. Yeah. It does, <laughs> it does sound like three people standing around. Doctor, doctor, fixer. Uh, Maxime, Pascal, Coltan. What are your plans? You got, you know, it's the middle of the morning. It's, it's like 2 or 3 a.m. We got a name of that doctor, right? I think Pascal did. You did. Yes. Uh, you have the name of the person who runs the facility, Dr. Barnabas, Dr. Barnabas Jenkins. Jenkins. I'm you be... also know that there's two other scientists who work there. You don't have their names, but... And real quick, do we do we have a Google Doc somewhere? Yes. Uh, there's, in the, there's a handout, and it should be called Group Notes, and uh, uh, you should be able to copy-paste that link. Gotcha. Yeah. Get yourself Sorry. some notes. I need another monitor. I'm going to grab that and pin it in the Discord as well. Yeah, that's a good call. Oh, wait, Grammarly. I don't need you now. 
<laughs> Spelt with a K, not a C. Okay. Oh, I don't know if I can pin that. I, I got it. it. Okay. So what are the three of you doing? Sounds like Pascal, you might have some ideas about Dr. Jenkins. His brother, Mr. Hyde. Uh, I just know his name. Uh, it's so... Jekyll. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, um, yeah, I know. So I'm I'm just kind of going over my my notes that I got from the security guy. I'm assuming he also gave me uh, descriptions of these people in addition to their names. Correct. And you're talking about uh, James Martin, your yes. your Arasaka contact who needs these people killed. Yes. Yep, you have descriptions of them. Okay. So I'm I'm basically just I, I'm I'm at home uh, with the cat. And the two of us are eating kibble, and I'm just, you know, going through my my, you know, pre-run ritual of, you know, getting all my all my gear together, making sure that that I've got, you know, ammo where I can get to it, um, and going over the dossiers of all the of all of these people. All right. Yeah. So, um, and planning out escape routes and you in the corner, I think is your, uh, stuffed cat toy mm -hmm. and your tabby cat napalm is, has like enfolded it around its stomach. Like it's doing that thing where it's captured it. Like it has a rat and is playing with it as if to pull it apart and rip it to shreds. It never, she never actually does. Napalm never does this, but, but it's been close. There's there's been some tearing. just enough to worry me. Yeah. Uh, Colton, what do you got? I'm assuming I'd have like more privileged access to doctor stuff. Uh, doctor yeah, I mean, team. especially with if you have a uh, like library search and you want to use a data terminal. Uh, if have you have education research. and general knowledge, you may may know of this person. I'll do education. That's higher for me. Okay. But like just looking at background, where he went to school, what he studied. Yeah, if I'd say that it's not unreasonable that you could spend like an hour going through some papers in wherever you live uh, and find like something written by Dr. Barnabas Jenkins a couple years ago. Is there like a doctor version of the LexisNexus? No. <laughs> no, there just is LexisNexus. <laughs> mm. That is the whole, like Google, their search engines don't really exist. They have LDLs, long distance links, and, and bulletin boards. Oh boy, do they have bulletin boards. Uh, no mod? There's no, no need to even roll. If you're okay. putting in a little bit of time work on this, you have, you've got general education and, and knowledge. You've got doctor experience. You, you could know of this guy. For sure. Uh, so he used to work for Arasaka. Um, that's when he wrote this paper. That's who he was working for. It's um, what do they call them? White papers. It's like an openly published paper. He has to do some every few years in order to maintain his credentials because he's not really like a practicing doctor. Um, probably you've heard that he was once like a very coveted neurosurgeon and cyber doc. Uh, but by this point in his career, when he wrote this document, he, he pretty much works solely on cybernetics. Um, he was talking about the uh, feasibility without any ethical ramifications. So the paper makes it clear, like in, the, in a void, in the absence of human ethics, as if one was an artificial intelligence, what is the practical feasibility of creating deployable cyber soldiers uh operatives that could be remote controlled perhaps by an experienced elder veteran who needed to jump into the field in a younger more agile body uh, it's essentially a lot like the avatar project from the movie avatar but not the bad avatar movie the other bad avatar movie oh you mean gamer starring <laughs> gerald butler uh, I don't know that reference, but possibly it's literally criminals get implanted with a chip and then gamers play them in a blood sport. Yep. That, yep. It, that would be very similar to the program posed by this guy. 
the paper was regarded as you know like he has figured out most of what he needs to do it's brilliant in its own way but the ethics of it are horrifying and uh at some point after this zeta tech forcibly relocated him from arasaka to which he doesn't appear to have had any qualms about uh is there anything else you want to learn about him dr barnabas jenkins he's a african-american gentleman uh he was born in in new jersey but not in redline city uh he used to work in new york uh until right after the bombing the incident uh where a nuclear weapon was set off in 93 uh he worked for air soccer for most of his life before switching over to well of course he went to college independent of air soccer and then joined them and then switched over or was forcibly relocated yeah. uh, to zeta tech whose entire thing is cybernetics and under the which, table black market research which neighborhood does he live in uh, so he lives he lives in the elite upper level like beyond corporate he lives in the most expensive neighborhood so he he lives quite close to Zeta Tech Warehouse 22 um, you're not sure which penthouse level apartment he has but there is a building that you believe that Zeta Tech corporate executives live at at this time right I was just like wondering which which of the two free player characters I could go to? Because I know Pascal has previous Arasaka contacts. Mm -hmm. And if he lived in the same place or lived, we have enough information. If he lived anywhere near Maxine, Maxine would be able to find he him. He doesn't live anywhere near Maxine. Okay. Uh, she could still reach out through her contacts to find him, though. Because knowing his home address might... You know Maybe what building he lives in at the very least, but you don't know which floor or which, you know, penthouse apartment, which is surely going to be all all glass, viewscape of the entire city kind of deal. I mean, if it's if it's worth her. So is that what you do, Colton? You go to Maxine. Yeah, well, like I would go to someone with the information that I have because okay. I can't so, do anything with myself. Maxine, three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you get a phone call. Still not I sleeping. Probably, I probably don't even. <laughs> She's like, get out of my DMs. <laughs> how, how does okay? I have cyberware. The like the surgery nanobots. Does that affect the how much I need to sleep or like my? No, mm -mm. Okay. no. you still sleep the same amount as anybody else. You'd be like the rest of us during this coronavirus, you know, go to sleep at 3 a.m., wake up at 11 in the afternoon. Yeah. Sorry, well, Spoonick, that's for those of us that aren't essential take, take workers. A take a nap at 1. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you do know the life, apparently. Say, I was just on vacation. Yeah. I got this. Dude, I, I missed my nap today. I was busy doing shit. So I'm, so I'm fucking tired. But I probably, um, I don't even know if I'd call first. If I know where Maxine lives... I feel I like you know where I live, right? Like I, I would like. I feel like we've exchanged addresses and information, right? You'd probably just hear a skateboard on like a carpeted hallway, like a hotel hallway thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I like both. I mean, like, come in. Yeah. Why don't you tell us? Like, you you live in an apartment, right? Like, what floor do you live on, and what what does the building look like? Is it is it a giant? you know concrete tower are we talking like an old style brick building with hundreds of apartments in it but are i feel you... like it's an old style brick building with hundreds of apartments in it like really poor insulation but you know it yeah. is what it is rent controlled like, though so like you you have to like buzz people in before they can get upstairs oh you just call so... anybody on the list and say pizza delivery <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> but he busted. actually but he has my information, so he actually buzzes the correct department, I feel like. And I'm, I just lay down to sleep, and I just kind of groggily get up, and I, like, I pet Brad in his little cage as so I'm, like, like, going to the door, very groggy-eyed. And I can see through the monitor who it is, and, I, and I, I press a button and buzz him in, and so, you know, this is better be good. So uh, when you're staying outside her apartment, uh, Colton, there is a small basket uh, which contains a head of lettuce and a block of sharp cheddar cheese at your feet. Uh, 
<laughs> I guess I'll just yeah, like that, Wow, that's completely. <laughs> I fucking kick it over. <laughs> no, I probably like. I'd hold up the basket. It's also got like a shotgun can of energy drink that I just did. Oh, you've added Mala. it to the <laughs> to the tribute. <laughs> well, like I've there's like an empty one, but there's also like another dollar store energy drink because I'm like it's three a.m. <laughs> Whatever. So like delivery. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already buzzed you and seen. Come on up. Okay. Yeah. I was saying this is outside your door. That's, oh, so yeah, yeah. I thought it was like, yeah, hey, like you okay, open so the door, he's standing down. there and he's like picked up this oh, basket. Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's looking okay. at it oh. and he puts gotcha. an energy drink in there. I guess he also yeah. puts an empty can in there for, for no reason. I look at him quizzically and just like take it because, you know, I get these all the time, just kind of sit it aside in my pile of other baskets. <laughs> I'll just like walk past the pile of baskets and like, okay. So this Barnabas guy. I know what he used to do. I was wondering if you could help me find out where he lives. I mean, probably. I have contacts all over this block. Okay. And just lay out like, this is where he did his doctorate. This is where he mm -hmm. taught last. He worked at Arasaka. Mm -hmm. uh, probably like, they probably have to, if he has to do new papers every once in a while, like the most recent one, probably has more up-to-date location information like institute or like sponsored by or is that with the arasaka one yeah the arasaka is the last paper that That's he has publicly one? published so he's gonna need to do a new one soon but yeah but he was into some pretty gnarly shit ethically anyway Okay, so who would I, let's see, so in this universe, who would I, like, logically know? You can make a street deal. And That's what I was going to say. Like, it sounds like a street deal. Yep. So, so I could call, like, perhaps, like, a drug dealer contact or someone who's, like, in that neighborhood who works at area very closely. Or all right, so this is a high end drug dealer that sells it sells drugs yes. to the highest levels. What's this person's yes. name? This person's name is Zed Hammerston. Yeah, you know, uh, of the Austrian Hammerstens, of, of course. course. Yeah, yeah, you know, wealthy family. He, you know done wrong but you know he's, cookie he's also still doing good you know business is good so i'm rolling street deal to call him and get some information yeah it's gonna be a 25 street deal. okay is um, there a help action in this game or no not for something like this i can't use like luck or you can use all the luck you want your luck has reset since last time so please feel free to i'm gonna use, use luck i've got invest. nine luck so i'm gonna do Gonna roll street deal, and I'm gonna add. Oh, I'm gonna add like five luck. Okay, that's big. That's big. Twenty-seven. Yeah. Dang. Okay. Nice. Uh, Good use of luck. This guy is a little outside of your social circles, right? Like when we're talking high-end drug dealer, you know, he's several tiers above you in the hierarchy of the city. Uh, but after. Just a, a few minutes of waiting time, uh, you get him on the phone, and uh, he goes, Maxime Martini, huh? Hmm? Is yeah. this who I am talking to? I am. Hey, uh, we have done business before. We have, yeah. I, I mean, I, I know. I know it's been a while. I mean, I realize we run in, you know, slightly different circles, and you know, uh, apparently we run in slightly different uh, time zones. You know, it's it's <laughs> three a.m. here, and you are calling me. Oh, thank, th thanks for being understanding. Appreciate it. Yes, I will give you 60 seconds to explain why you have awoken me. So I need to know, um, I need to know everything you know about Barnabas Jenkins. He is a, he's a friend of mine. Um, we are trying to um, reach out to him for a partnership opportunity um, within my community. And 
we're just having a hard time locating him. We, we think he's a hot lead, but we're not quite sure yet. Can you help me out? What do I get out of this? You would. Well, let's see. I mean, what do you want? Colm holds up the basket of, like, lettuce. Listen, is this like a video call? <laughs> he needs roughage. <laughs> oh, it's not a video call. I don't think that the only video calls you can do are via cyber modems. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, I think Wait, they do what, what have those like? AT&T desk video phones. That is not what you're using. You're using a cell phone. Okay. They don't even have email it's, and it's, text it's, messaging. You have to plug yeah. into something to get your email. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you remember the uh, old PlayStation cameras? It's kind of like that. We, <laughs> you, like, you need to have like a like a specific like camera device. Uh, I was gonna say Game it. Boy camera, but that might yeah, be yeah, wow. Age. But but yeah. Game plus, Boy camera plus six is... ISDN lines. <laughs> <laughs> ISDN. Here's the thing, you that... both need to have Game Boy cameras. Holy shit. Like, both have to have the same camera on both ends of the line in order to make it happen. <laughs> and they're super networks. expensive. PSP and ad hoc they look awful. Yeah. So uh, he goes, uh, this is not normally how I do business. Come to me with offer. You know, this is how one does drugs. Someone says, I want drugs. And I say, how much you pay? And they oh, give God, me a number. This is exactly and I say, how I would do a drug deal. God, I'd be like, hi, may I purchase some marijuana, please? Um, no. Um, <laughs> one, like one marijuana, please. Yeah, he just like goes. One personal usage of marijuana, please. <laughs> he goes, I do not deal in marijuana. <laughs> There's no money in it. It's taxable now. It's the... Uh, I only do designer things, the good stuff. Huh? So, what so do you really offer much. me for this partnership opportunity? Uh, I'm about to come into some high-end weaponry. Just to be clear, the interested. weaponry that has been offered to you is low-end. It's the lowest of the low-end. I am lying. <laughs> I understand. Like, <laughs> this is Just to be clear, this is a dangerous person to lie to. I'm about to come into some medium-end. <laughs> <laughs> I don't weaponry. like Arthur. You're overstating how high end this weaponry is. This is the type of shit you get from vending machines. Yes. Oh God, I've got like, like nothing. Shit. Like, like he robbed a vending machine to get you those guns. <laughs> that is what happened. Ugh. And you gave him body parts for them. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, though. The gun, the gun deal hasn't gone down, and the body okay, parts so, haven't been acquired. So you're saying like I should have kept the body parts and not taken the guns? You don't yes. have the body parts. <laughs> <laughs> well, then screw the guns. Okay, I, I'd rather like. Look, he's, out. here's the thing. He's offering you the guns. the The man who is offering you the guns is offering you them at a discount, five finger discount. Um. But like. Also, so in theory, I have future body parts. Yes. So I'd rather like I could get more mileage from bartering the body parts than the guns. So you you're going into the body parts security uh, industry. You're now investing in body parts. Yes. <laughs> All right. So your plan is to sell this guy that you will bring him dead people's body parts in the yes. future once you're done killing them. Yes. <laughs> okay. Please word that for me. <laughs> Is it, <laughs> is it like Wall Street bets, you know? Maxine <laughs> leaving. Wall Street bets, just... holy shit. It's just... Penny stocks. <laughs> Penny stocks. Oh, did you see that Wall Street bets for the guy that just continuously bet on Tesla over and over yes. again? He was yes. like, I'm, I started with like a thousand bucks and I'm a millionaire I, I, now. I'm I just going to keep know, going. I know, oh I know it's, I know it's like a meme subreddit, but like I can't tell if they're actually spending money. They are. I, they're posting they their, their spends. Be. They can't be like, like it's they're they're like yeah. I had like a hundred grand inheritance, and I figured I'd just invest it all in one stock. Fucking YOLO, and they're like, yep, got three million return. Like this can't be. I mean, look at all the people that are like, well, lost a hundred thousand yeah, dollars well, on, yeah, on Coke today. Too. It's God. it's the anyway. Right. I'll shut up. All right, so, Jillian, sell me on right. Maxine telling this guy you're going to give him body parts. You're, you want the information now, and you will give him body parts later. <laughs> yeah, but like body parts are super valuable. So... That's true. They are. Yeah. And dude, this is a guy who probably knows people who are in need of new liver. 
is, is Maxine there... is leaving a trail, not of body parts, but of people wanting body parts. <laughs> that some guys at home, he's just like, they're so thirsty oh, for I those body wait. parts. <laughs> I can't wait. I got the best deal. Like I, I made Maxine believe that she was getting this good shit, and she's gonna give me so many livers. <sighs> All right. Is there a second phone in Maxine's apartment that like Colin could be listening and I'd be like, body parts, I can do this. I can do that. Oh no, but you could be standing next to her listening in and, and yeah. be like writing it down on a piece of paper. Yeah, like, I, I thought parts. you were on speaker. You're on speaker. Yeah. Okay. I feel like speaker phones are a thing, right? Okay. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. So is Colton, I don't know if Colton's very well known as far as like, all he does, he has like, Sold a lot of body parts. He just like eviscerated a police station. That okay. So are you gonna hop in here and say something about it? Yeah, like if he's heard of it, it's like I just got a whole bunch of what? Are, what are there? The Red Line PD. Yeah, Red Line Police Department. Yeah, I've got a whole stash of organs, a few eyeballs that are still good. Eyeballs. Organic, free range. I don't normally deal in this. Oh, sorry, I dropped out of the accent. <laughs> I do not normally yeah. deal in eyeballs, but I'll tell you what: kidneys, livers. You give them to me fresh, twenty-four hours. You harvest them over today. You bring them to me by midnight tonight. That's not twenty-four hours. Works. It's 24 hours minus three hours. You lose three okay. hours because you wake me up at three o'clock in the morning. Fair enough. It's three o'clock? Jesus, fuck. <laughs> it's close to 3.15. All right, so this is how the deal will go Jesus down. Cracks another energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one I brought for Maxine, I'm like, oh. It sounds I'm as if you are low on money if you are not offering me money. Right. So deal goes like this. I will uh, provide you with contact information with Dr. Barnabas Jenkins, his location. I will also inform him that you will be calling upon him so that he knows the deal is going down and that I am part of the deal. Okay? Whatever deal happens, I want 5% finder's fee. I am doing this on uh, escrow. So you bring me... Uh, Let's call it 2,000 euro bucks worth of livers and kidneys by midnight tonight. Colton would know how many that is, right? Yeah, it's 10 livers and kidneys. Great. Mixed. Well, that's a lot of dead people. <laughs> Look at Pascal. Pascal's like, no, don't do this. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, it literally is 10 dead. Well, no, it could be five dead people, right? Yeah, because you could take five livers and five kidneys. Correct? Well, they've already got bodies in there that they're experimenting on. I'm sure they've got a few. In oh, yeah, that's true. I love the idea that Mass is just like, man, we're going to make so much good news. It's going to be good. The, the worst thing we're going to do is make bad corporations get caught for something they didn't do when they deserve to do when they deserve to, to rot for other things they did. And the rest of my party's just like, we're going to take his liver. <laughs> we're going to take his kidneys. They flash forward to like calling Barnabas outside, Pascal killing him <laughs> and Colton taking his liver and sending it to the guy that gave us the information. That would, that would not end well for you. <laughs> so th just to be clear, the deal that this guy has laid out is on the premise that this partnership opportunity is very real and that he's getting 5% of the cut on it. Okay. If the deal goes down. I mean, we could still do that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so he's waiting to hear whether you agree to this deal or not. And uh, unsaid, of course, is that if he gives you this information and you fail to produce the livers and kidneys or the prerequisite 2,000 euro bucks instead, he's going to be very upset and will probably start putting resources to your business being disrupted. With two episodes in... And we've already pissed off Arasaka, and we've pissed off Actually, this you, fucking guy. Now. You're, you're on Arasaka's good side right now, which is surprising. I, mean, I feel like I'm going to have to kill a lot of people. <laughs> we're we're going to do a lot of wet work for, for, a, for a game about doing blackmail. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I laid out the thesis for how the game works, and all of you... Uh, experience the world in your own way so what i need from you maxine is a yes or no to his offer 
Yeah, no, I mean, that sounds definitely doable. Very well. Uh, my secretary will send you electronic mail with information about Dr. Barnabas Jenkins's get into contact. I will call him now and let him know that you will be calling upon him in a formal capacity for a partnership opportunity. In the future, please use office hours. I know it is difficult to imagine drug dealer has office hours, but, uh, you know, let's say sun is up, good time to call. And then he hangs up the phone. Yeah, rude. I didn't even know it was 3 a.m. I'm sorry. <laughs> Black on the wall says it's 3.20 now. Wow, that's like, wow, wow one hour like away. flies in your house. Almost oh, 4.20. Nice <laughs> uh, several minutes later, you get a ding of an electronic mail trans translating through local LDLs, bulletin boards to reach your consoles or your, your phone. Uh, on it, it indicates that uh, Dr. Barnabas Jenkins lives at uh, Wushang Tower. Uh, and he is on Zeta Tech's block of floors. They have the top floor, four floors set aside for uh, Zeta Tech CEOs. And he lives on the top floor, floor 54, in apartment A2. This is a floor of CEOs for this company. So uh, this is pretty standard. Like the rooms are all probably empty except for the one that he's currently in. Like right. if there was a business conference here or someone was doing a layover from JFK or something, okay. they would take an hour ride down here and spend the day, you know, waiting in a very nice, well-furnished apartment with a butler staff and all of that. When I say, when, when I'm saying apartment, what I'm really mean is the nicest place to live anywhere in the city. Yeah. Like living here costs thousands of euro bucks a month. You know, the, the, there's probably a, a solo security staff to respond to any incidents. Uh, both of you would know that Wusheng tower has a AV port on top. So like helicopters can land there or aerodyne vehicles. Um, it's not long enough for a fixed wing aircraft to land, but something with a short range, like a, a VSTOL, uh, could take off from it. Hmm. We should maybe send this info to Pascal. Or new. Yeah, no, I concur. <laughs> okay, Pascal. You're laying down to go to sleep at 3.30 in the morning? Belly full of kibble. <laughs> yes. There's a little kibble uh, by the side of your face. What was it? Chin chibble? Chin chibble. <laughs> that uh, is fucking terrible. Do you, do you own a cyber deck or something like that? I don't I think do, so. I do not. All right, then, yeah, your phone, I, it takes a while for this to transmit, right, to your phone. Uh, but your phone eventually gives you a bing indicating you have been sent an electronic mail. All 10 kilobytes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a little while. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to Newton and MASH in just a second when Newton gets this mail. Uh, Pascal, you get a mail indicating the location of Dr. Barnabas Jenkins, one of your targets for murder. Okay. Um, just gonna leave us on read. Damn. <laughs> they don't have that I've technology yet. Yeah, <sighs> no, no, they don't. They don't have that. <laughs> that kind of in, that level of interactivity is not in the cyberpunk universe. Nope. Yeah, it's all it's all like shorthand. Like it's all like, uh, like they wouldn't even have like physical buttons. They'd they'd have like like three characters per the nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like H, one, I, and J are all on the same button. Yeah. Yeah. I forget what they call that, but I was real good at the that. The T9. Yep. The T9. Uh, oh, interface. I sucked at T9, but I was good at click, 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 click. <laughs> I did that. I, yeah, I was real good with two fingers on T9. So. so, what are the three of you doing, Colton, uh, Maxine, and Pascal, with this information, or are you just sitting on it for tonight? Maybe sitting on it. Okay. Pascal, not... is, Pascal is sitting on it. All right. 
Pas Pascal will will use this information should should hit Barnabas not be in the lab when we when we Understood. break in there. Um, but for now he's uh, he's sitting on it. Yeah, when it's when it's clear that we're not going to receive a message back, Colin will just be like, "Well, okay." Gonna I'll go home. Your, I'll get it out of your hair, Maxine. I owe you an energy drink. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I just snuggled with my chinchilla and you know settle in for the evening. <laughs> I'll take both, both on empty. Out. I'll take both empty cans out of her apartment. That's nice of you. <laughs> Do you throw them in the recycling on the way out so that they go around the rim and then drop into it? Yeah, like a dude perfect behind the back. Yep. Oh, nice. As you do it, you go, Jordan. I've <laughs> Yeah. Jordan. <laughs> In my version of the Cyberpunk 2020 like universe, Jordan Michael Jordan got cybernetic implementation so that he could actually make free throws. He stole Kobe's arms. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I would love to see the Cyberpunk future version of Space Jam. Wow. I mean, I wanna, look, I you could do see... Space Jam in virtual reality in, in that, in, in photorealistic. You I want to could... see Cyberpunk Olympics, man. <laughs> you already did. You went to South America. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. All right. So Newton and MASH, you arrive to, at the upper deck of New Red Line. Uh, the cops, for once, don't hassle you. It's the middle of the night. You're riding in on a motorcycle. The streets are empty. Doesn't look like you're up to any trouble. Uh, you guys are armed, but you're not so well armed that it would be an issue. Um, however, Mash, uh, your credit account has been ticketed. Uh, you've received a fine from Zeta Tech uh, corporate police for 100 euro bucks for not wearing a helmet while on a motor vehicle. You have 60 uh, days to either pay or contest it in corporate court. <laughs> I told you to wear a helmet. Well, I mean, you had one last time. What am I... It's literally still on the back of my motorcycle. Why didn't you put it on? <laughs> do I, do that... I need to instruct you every time you get on this bike? You're sitting that, on the helmet, helmet. <laughs> that's on the back of the bike. I thought I thought that was like a you know lumbar support. We've been talking about lumbar support a lot. You know, there's it's cameras important. everywhere. Whatever. When you take care of your hair as much as I do, sometimes you want people to see it. You know, just 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 a thing. It's just a thing. So what's the story? What are we doing? What are we doing? We're we doing a stakeout. So we yes, we're doing a stakeout. We're at a, yeah. a position where we can see the comings and goings of the people at mm -hmm. this warehouse. Warehouse, mm -hmm. what was it? Warehouse 22? Warehouse 22. Zeta Tech Warehouse 22. So, uh, so you all arrive on the outside. Uh, you can see that the light rail system has a little subway entrance quite close to, um, quite close to the facility. There is a warehouse door where you could bring, you know, like, S storage vehicles uh semi trailers and stuff, yeah. yeah there's a guard in the window there there's a hollow billboard showing zeta tech products like uh there's a zeta tech media package for people like mash nathers that they can wear on their head with like a cyber optic an external cyber optic so you know like a targeting scope and like a boom microphone all that stuff uh they also have a zeta tech themed uh exterior noodle shop uh, where there are three people currently getting noodles at uh, 3 35 in the morning and uh they're being served by a uh a robot are they essentially. called zadles are they called zoodles no none of that is what you, everything you're saying is wrong um <laughs> there is a led lighted walk-up located right here that leads to the main entrance of the facility okay are we on the right map? So I just want to make sure you guys are seeing all this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, shit. Oh, okay, I oh didn't sorry. Realize. I I didn't realize you were on the map. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Be... All right. So, okay. So those are the guys sitting at the counter eating noodles. Correct. Uh, the thing north of them is the entryway? Yeah, so it goes up a couple of flights. Uh, so it's like two stories. Oh, I see. If you, if you compare it to the laboratory layout, it, it's the walk up there. Yeah, I see. Yep, yep. yep. Uh... 
Newton, your um your awareness notice, given that you're a solo and you add your solo skill to it, is mm -hmm. good enough to automatically mark the following cameras, which I'm going to show you on the where, map. Where are we? Are we like in front of the building or are we like You are located a distance away where you don't think you will be immediately noticed was what so, I think. So what what I had in mind is we're kinda of like there's like a access road or whatever to get there that has like a concrete wall or uh, a barrier to like keep cars or whatever from flying off the road. Sure. I'm assuming that we are sort of pulled off on the shoulder and just kind of chilling and acting, you know, non-discriminant, you know, hanging out on the- Just two the, guys the, smoking a cigarette yeah. on the- Yeah, hanging out. Five, okay, so this will work away. for a while. Two dudes sitting in a hot tub five feet apart because they're not gay. Yeah, so- I just made that joke. The <laughs> Mash is doing extreme YouTuber voice over the whole thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. This will work for a while, but after 10 to 15 minutes, corporate police are going to drop by and be like, why are these guys smoking a cigarette in our very nice neighborhood? Sure. All right. All right so these three, there's three cameras, yeah? Uh, yes. You believe that there are three cameras that you immediately detect with no, no roll, no problem. Okay. Uh, they are, you know, small, very small, but sensitive top of the line they do the swivel right mm -hmm. uh probably they go through like ir and all like magnetic resonance that kind of they're, they're checking multiple levels at once okay so they're not just like sweeping the ground 15 feet away they're up down yeah all over general okay. purpose okay kind of what you'd expect from a mega corporation they aren't messing sure. around sure uh, there doesn't uh, appear to be like any guns attached to the camera, like would be at a very secure question. facility. But that again is you haven't made a roll. I'm just telling you what you immediately spot with your base, which is something close to 20. Right. So what I really want to figure out is uh, what I'd like to figure out is not only the extent of the technology as far as security goes, but what, if any, physical danger the automated security system would pose to us should something go wrong okay um this will be two roles the first will be okay. awareness notice and uh it might i think it added your um your solo skill combat sense to it last time but if not we'll just add it manually so it says so no mod right no mod okay did it add oh. it correctly uh five plus eight yes uh, yep. okay so well. on a 17 uh you don't discover anything further mm -hmm. in regards to uh the layout of the security sure. right you think you you have a solid grasp of what the front of the building external security looks like um i am going to need you to make some sort of electronic security or something along those lines to scope out the capability i don't know that i really have anything like okay well that. then just make a tech roll tech roll okay Oof. uh the only thing you can determine is that the robot that is cooking could mm -hmm. be of danger to you right like yeah. if it's some sort of secret robot it has incredibly good knife handling skills conceivably if it was programmed to be like some sort of secret defense weapon it could throw knives at you all right um i'll, I'll look at uh i'll talk to mash and uh, i'll say all right mash we've cased out the front we can see probably our way in we don't I mean, want to hang out here for too long because some cops want to start asking some questions. Okay. Let's swing around I mean, to the back. Before we do that, though, uh, Arthur, I would like to um, focus my hearing uh, into the building, if possible, please. Okay. I have wideband radio scanner. I also have... Um, uh, they aren't using radios hearing. in there. Uh, you listen. You'll pick up plenty of stuff on radio, but nothing inside here. What else you got? Mm -hmm. uh, so I can um, basically I can um, 
listen to audio from a very far distance away and also through walls to a certain degree and then i can isolate those things in order to amplify the audio so think about like the gadget which cybernetic is it uh it is the uh amplified hearing as well as the uh the sound editing i think it is the one that does that hang on let me double check uh, sound, yeah, the uh, Zoom the allowed, allows the user to edit out distracting noise or, or zero in on a particular sound. So I, to the best of my ability, I'd like to try and hear some, uh, not so much what they're saying, because I don't think it'd be entirely possible, but I just want to get a, a rough idea of how many people realistically are inside the building, if possible. Uh, sorry. So you had? Did you have amplified hearing? I do. Okay. And I also have sound editing. Sound editing. Do you have level damper? Uh, I do not think I have level dampening. All right. Uh, sound editing allows you to distract. Okay. So you get a plus three to your hearing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Make a awareness check. Okay. Um, this is what you pick up. You have to focus because it's two different sources and you switch between them every few seconds. One of the people that is eating at- Oh, by the way, this is being passed over to, um, uh, this is being passed over to Pascal as well via, um, via my, uh, um, neural link thing or whatever it is yeah I, there's something i can do where i can like it's a radio link where i can like connect to like another device but i don't know if you have a if you don't have an accepting device then you can just listen via your phone like you I have a radio link radio. pascal I... not, Pas- not pascal sorry I, newton sorry. <laughs> okay I'm so you... getting those two mixed up i really do i don't know why all right i mean i do have a cell phone all right, so yeah. you are listening in via the cell phone. He is, sure. He's sending it to you. Uh, one of the guys seated at the table has a mastoid communications device. So it's essentially at the base of his uh, jaw. And, oh, it's uh, the ones that stick on the glue under the jaw one? Yeah, have? well, it's internal for him. So any mouth movements that he would make to speak are translated as if they were act so he doesn't have to speak in order to talk essentially the minuscule mm-hmm. amount of movement will translate it um and he's saying something like this is undercover one you guys watching me sharing smoke operations a compromise zooming undercover work uh you switch over to the second radio channel which is um you believe it is the guard in the external guardhouse by the warehouse door. Uh, at the same time, he's calling in your positions, and he's going, uh, "This is uh, this is Dog Pound. We got uh, two Jokers out here. One of them looks like maybe he could be a threat. I think I might have seen the other one on TV sometime. Looks like they're just sharing a smoke. I'll keep an eye on them." I don't think operations have been compromised, but, uh, you know, we have the thing tomorrow, so. Understood, command. Understood. And then you hear the sound of someone loading a magazine into a rifle and then chambering around. So I'm I'm obviously going to give MASH a look. Significant PC glance. I like it. Like, what did I just say? We've worn out our welcome in this position. We need to fall back a little bit. Come at it from a different direction. Case out a different, this is a big facility. We need to keep moving to avoid suspicion. We've worn out our welcome. Roger that big mama, let's do it. (sighs) That's your code name, by the way. You like it? Yeah, what, what's what's your code name? Big bowl cut? No, <laughs> mashed potatoes. Oh Jesus Christ! 
Uh, so you guys are heading to the rear of the facility? Yeah, let's let's go... Um... So like over here. Uh... Back over here. This is the back side of the facility. Are you... Oh, uh, yes. So it's yeah, like yeah, a yeah. trash alley. So the back here, there are two um, sodium vapor lights. These are the things that they put on the sides of highways. They look kind of orangey. Mm. They spread a lot of light. Uh, there's a lot of trash canisters that have electronic locks on them. So people bring trash from inside the facility, leave it back here for a dumpster to pick up, but everything might be proprietary company information, so it's all locked away. So I, I want to make it clear, like, as we're going around the back, like, I would, like, kill the lights on the motorcycle. It's an electric motorcycle, so it shouldn't make too much noise, right? Understood. So um, you know that several of these walls back here are not real walls. Like, you can see uh, windows and... I might need to sedate. illuminate some stuff. Yeah. This you can see windows located here mm. and here, mm -hmm. but uh, these other windows don't actually exist. These are the hollow panels. So from whoever's inside, they appear like windows or whatever they put up there. But for you, they look like the rest of the wall, sure. essentially. So it's it's very thin material. Uh, but it is, you know, meant to hold things up. And the that's the wall that we were talking about possibly... Yeah, so there are through. several walls that could be cut through or destroyed in some way to break into the facility. So uh, If anyone's in there right now, they can definitely see you walking by. Like, there's no hiding from them. You're well, underneath huge orange sodium lights going through a narrow alleyway. Well, what about... I, I thought there was, like, trash cans and stuff like that, yeah? There are, but the trash cans are located here. So, like, so, when you go back there, you're very visible. It, well, but is there, like, a way that... I, I mean, I do have stealth as a primary skill. Okay. Uh, I'll we'll, uh, allow for that. Okay. Yeah, let's make a roll. All right. It can be 20. You're not in an optimal position, and uh, I'm counting MASH as part of this. Like, Fuck. you're you're hiding MASH behind you. I have stealth as well as a skill. All right, make the roll. What's yeah? What's your stealth? Mine's only two. Mine's a one. You need oh, twenty. Jesus. Look at these smooth operators. Nope. Oh. Uh, for all you know, the two of you rolled pretty well in your own mind. Uh, you think that as you're like sneaking and hiding behind these garbage cans, you feel like you're securely, perfectly hidden. Bro, this is the the fucking sickest shit I've done. In a long time. Yeah, well. You know what? I, you, you, doing this espionage stuff? Oh, it's going to be so good. I think what we it, need to do is pretend like we're taking a leak and then move on. We're like kind together? of an exposed. I mean, sure. what's your backstory? What's your backstory? Why, why are you taking a leak? Are you drunk? Because I drank water an hour ago and I need to go to the bathroom. What? How's that no for one, a backstory? No one's going to believe My backstory you drunk only is that water. They can see us. And you they want to show us. them your penis? I'll turn my back to the wall. I don't know, man. That seems kind of flimsy. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Here's the thing. We're brothers from out of state, okay? We came here looking for a good time. You and I went bar hopping, and we couldn't find the latest toilet anywhere because let's be honest this place is a dump and we figured why not piss behind that building the one with the noodles so let me ask a question mash you have a wideband radio scanner i do uh it automatically scans all major police fire ambulance and trauma team communication bands that's right you can also set it to cover one specific band and then it will inform you via your internal radio or your Times square marquee both of which you have uh, mm -hmm. of any messages that it can attempt to d pick up on. Are you doing it wideband or have you set it to pick up something specific? Uh, it, well, if I could work out the band that the, the guards were on, I probably would have set it to that. Uh, you can set it for Zeta Tech Police Band? Yeah. So okay. Uh, there is a scramble communication going out over that band and it's two ways. Like someone is sending something out and someone is getting something back. Uh, you are not able to descramble it without some much more serious hardware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and that stuff's big and clunky. So, 
Um, oh, uh, Big Mama, just so you know. Uh, what is it, mashed potatoes? Thank you. I'm so glad we're doing this. Um, <laughs> listen, Zetatec, Felice, they're talking to each other. Just so you know. It's they're really obviously nice. talking about us. A backstory isn't going to help us. We need to change our position. This is a fluid operation. We have to wait till the rest of the team is here, but we have to case this entire area to look for any weak points, any strategic okay. areas, or okay. how their security operates. We obviously know that they can pinpoint when people are moving around the facility that aren't supposed to be here. So we need to keep moving. Okay, can I finish my piss first, though? You're actually peeing? Well, wasn't that the plan? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, oh, don't worry about it. My vision automatically blurs any genitalia, including my own, so <laughs> no one can see it. Um, it makes it very difficult sometimes, but it's it's required wow. with my job. Okay. Wow. That listen, I have a question here. We gotta break it down. Like, do Twitch rules apply here? Like, uh, it, body painting is that scrambled or not? Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I've still got, I've still got, I've still got some stuff like tuned into my chipware because I, I recently did an expose on like, you know, um, strip joints in ah, red line. Ah, ah, ah. So instead of right. like editing everything, it was nope. just easy to install like a, a gratuitous chip, you know, yeah. like it was just easier. I understood. So, um, yeah. As you, the two of you exit the alleyway, dragging the electric motorcycle behind you, uh, Mash zipping up his fly, we can see in the distance above that there is a Zeta Tech police helicopter uh, descending on your position right now, and that there are like four guys on ropes rappelling down at this very moment. And it's time for a break. We'll be back for the second God half damn it. in eight minutes. Stick around to find out what is going to happen to these <laughs> these happy chuckly fellows wow. who are no, currently. You don't believe me? <laughs> DNA scrub the hallway. I peed over there. Trust me, they, like, they believe you peed back potatoes. there. <laughs> Tune in for character generation after the break. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be back shortly. Stick around. Enjoy the music. <laughs> 